for the last five or six months, it has not made sense to invest in condos. However, month over month, prices have been coming down, rents are going through the roof, and we're not even in peak rental season. Take a look at the stats I'm about to show you and let me know what you think in the comments below. I feel we might be reaching an inflection point between drops in prices and increases in rents where investing in condos may make sense once again in the very near term. For a very long time now, condo investing has been misunderstood for one reason, negative cash flow. Everybody thinks that if a condo or an investment is negative cash flow, meaning that your expenses are not covered by the rent you're getting, you're therefore losing money. And I have made two videos explaining why that is not correct. You can see them in my videos if you look at profitable negative cash flow condos right here. And there's another one where I show why condos are no longer profitable right here. I go through an Excel model. I go through all the assumptions, all the costs. If you're interested in finding out more, start there. Now let's get into this video. I always love giving a little bit of context. Condo investing is a little bit more complicated because it requires somebody that knows what they're doing and somebody that understands condo status certificate, good buildings versus bad buildings and all that good stuff. Here's some context. This is just the downtown core, the CO1 and CO8. As you can see, this is how many towers we have, and this is just what we can see right here. There are hundreds of towers in the city of Toronto. If you have any questions specific to condos, you can schedule a call with me on Calendly in the description below, and feel free to pick my brain about condos and different ideas you may have, and I'll give you my unbiased opinion as to what you should do and whether or not it makes sense. A couple of things. I'm very bullish on resale condos in the downtown core, especially in prime areas. Number one, pre-construction condos, the costs are going through the roof. There is Inflationary pressure on labor, which is already very expensive. Land is through the roof right now because of zoning. Development charges from the city of Toronto through the roof again. So pre-construction costs have gone so high that right now, the best investment you can make if you wanted to put money into real estate is likely going to be downtown condos. Once we reach that equilibrium where rents and prices make sense, so you can pull an internal rate of return of mid-teens with a 20% down. But that's for another video. What I want to talk about is why resale condos, I think, are going to make a comeback in the very near term. If you look at Broker Bay, I've pulled the last two years of data, and we can see right here, again, we're going to start with showings. Showings throughout 2020 were pretty low. This was probably one of the worst years for condos in the last 10 years. We're looking at under 10,000 showings per, per month. We had a bit of a run-up in 2021, and then a taper again taper again and then we had a huge run up right until March and now with interest rate hikes obviously condos are starting to get a little bit less traction this is for resale throughout the downtown core if you look at offers very similar offers were down in 2022 they were doing significantly better in 2021 as you can see they were technically double since 2020 and they really started peaking in the beginning of 2022 and now the steam has been taken out of the market because interest rate hikes. What does all of this mean? Well, let's look at one of my favorite Twitter personalities, Ivan Gorbade, who has some of the best stats. Again, I suggest you follow him. He releases mid-month stats and end-month stats that I find very useful. If you take a look at downtown condos for May of 2022, CO1, to keep this simple, CO1 is west of Young, CO8 are condos east of Young Street. Prices have come down month over month, 1.2% to 7.8%, and sales are decreasing. So that's one side of the story. But now let's take a look at what's happening with leases for condo units in the downtown core. Rental demand as it increases into the summer as students come back to school. As we know, 2020 was a very tough year for condos. Rents dropped 20, 30% in some areas. This shows you the level of showings. Again, we dropped significantly. Started getting to some sort of a normal level of 25,000 showings in July of 2021. And this is, again, the run-up you get from students. And then it tapered off. Typical, this is seasonal. And now we're starting to see a run-up again in May. And this is likely going to continue into the summer as students come back and they try to get their apartments. Taking a look at offers, it tells us an even crazier story. And this has to do with months of inventory. Right now, there is very little supply of, of units to be leased. And this is why you're seeing offers go through the roof, which is also driving prices to go through the roof down in downtown condos. The average rent increases month over month. We're talking 4.1% for one bedrooms just month over month. And we're talking about 3% for studios. You can see right here, this is actually wild. Yet if you take a look at the amount of active rental listings right now, month over month, we had a 35% drop. That means we're absorbing a ton of units and not that many units are coming up for lease as we speak which is driving up the prices higher. Now let's take a look at the average rent. Mostly we're gonna focus on studios and one bedrooms. The yellow line right here, 
you can see a gradual gradual increase roughly 18 months ago a one bedroom was going for 1750 roughly now we're 2250 so we're almost at three covid rents in a lot of places depending on the area and it doesn't look like the trend is going to end here if you take a look at active listings again everything is being absorbed and there's less and less inventory which continues to drive rents up whether or not that is sustainable time will tell here's what we have to remember at the end of the day rents are always going to continue going up covid definitely put a damper to that However, condos are making a comeback. People are still going to want to live downtown. They're going to want to be close to their work and rents are going to continue going up, especially as we have all these inflationary pressures. Take a look. This is a unit in Yorkville that rented out for 1950 in 2016, which is six years ago. It is now renting at $3,000. This is a very common story throughout the downtown core. Rents are going up and they're going up fast. With condo rental investments, time in the market is the most important thing. Investing in condos can be painful in the first few years, especially if you have to negative cash carry them. But after a few years, after a few rent increases, things do look much better and in the long haul perform really well. As you can see right here, you're looking at a 50% rent increase in just six years. And this is likely not going to end now. Here's one of my favorite charts. This is a chart made by my friend Jordan from Precondo. By the way, you should see his channel. This guy knows everything about pre-construction. Probably one of the best in the city. I highly recommend watching his channel if you're interested in pre-construction. Now, what's cool about this chart is that it shows us the divergence between the average detached house price and the average condo price. Once the spread becomes too big, one of three things will happen. Either detached homes will come down in price, condos will go up in price or both will happen simultaneously what's happening right now obviously everything is going down however detached homes are going down the fastest which is narrowing the gap between these average prices which is creating an opportunity and i believe this is going to be a double-sided opportunity it's going to be an opportunity for those living in condos who are looking to upgrade to a detached because the spread between their condo and a detached is much smaller it was maybe one million dollars of extra mortgage in the past now we're looking at you know six to seven hundred thousand dollars in extra mortgage to do the exact same move while the detached dropped four hundred thousand their condo only dropped fifty thousand what this might mean is that we're going to see more units coming up on the market if people start upgrading and moving to those good school districts or getting that extra space they need to start their families if you're looking to take advantage of opportunities now or three months from now or six months from now or even 12 months from now get educated work with a realtor that understands condos knows them in and out understands status certificates and knows which condos are going to be appreciating well into the future and which ones aren't but not all condos are created equal if you have any questions specific to condos feel free to text or email me anytime and i'd love to chat about it if you found value in this video please like and subscribe this gives me the feedback i need to know what kind of content to put out that is going to help people navigate through this dynamic toronto real estate market and until next time thank you